Um, this little sketch is, uh, was part of a, a series of images that, that I contributed to a book that was published last year by Jim Bradley called uh, Before Albany. Jim is an archaeologist. And um, he, he sort of, I had heard about uh, Aaron Van Curler. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot about him. But, um, but through Jim's work, I became a little bit more familiar with who he was and what he did. Um, he had a, a Dutch uh, house barn that was built north of the fort. He basically lived in Indian territory. Um, he was an adventurous young man. Um, the, the waterway that you see in the background, I wonder if the pointer works. Yeah, it does. What do I have to do to get it going? Okay. Um, that's the Hudson River right there, out there. This little waterway where you see the boat kind of, and the water kind of going past the farmhouse, that was called the Little River. And um, Van Curler was of interest to me for a number of reasons. The fact that he was a farmer, a fur trader. Um, he also was involved in the trade of livestock, horses, and cows. Um, but he owned um, a bark. And um, in one of the translations, or many of the, of the translations that Charlie has done, there have been a few um, bark skippers mentioned. And I became very interested in this bark. What, what was a Dutch bark? Oh, that's great. What is a Dutch bark in, uh, in the 1650s? Um, I know what a sloop is. I know what a yacht is. And so I, I became very fascinated by that vessel. Um, about uh, four or five months after I started the project, I went to the Netherlands. And I went to the Shepvarts Museum, which is the uh, National Maritime Museum in Amsterdam. And um, I did some research there. And after a few days, I was able to find a set of plans of a Dutch bar. And uh, up until just a few years ago, I was building uh, models out of paper and cardboard. And I started, I sort of switched over to digital modeling. And this is a digital model that I built of, of uh, Van Curler's bar. It's basically a, a a pickup truck of its day. I mean, it, it was there wasn't anything there wasn't anything fancy about it. It had a, a wide flat uh, deck. Um, he could get um, cows and horses on this deck. It also had a horribly cramped little uh, cabin forward and aft for a small crew and the captain. And in, in the center there was a bay where they could put. Uh, livestock for longer voyages because, believe it or not, he could take this 52-foot uh, bark all the way to the Caribbean and back with a couple of horses on board. So here's the bark. This is what it looks like. What did it feel like? I mean, what was it? What was it like to, to see this thing operated on the river? This is a pen and ink drawing that I did of uh, again the Van Curler farm uh, near Albany, and there's the bark in the little river and a small sloop here alongside of it. Um, here's a painting that I did of the bark coming into the Little River. These are Iroquois canoes. Um, those are Mohawk Indians. And uh, the title of this painting is Curiosity of the Magua. Magua was a word that was used by the Dutch uh, for the uh, Mohawks. Um, so here you see some warriors in elm bark canoes. And on board the, the bark, there are a couple of uh, workhorses, and it's kind of making its way into the little river. The bark became so fascinating to me that I started, I took it down <coughs> river a few miles. Uh, it went from uh, the Troy area down to Albany, and here it is at Castle Island in the background. This is how the Dutch offloaded vessels like this. They ran them aground at high tide. Uh, when the water, when the tide went out, they put boards down on the mud flat, and then they would uh, carry the cargoes out, load them aboard the ship, and then the ship would be refloated at high tide and make its way down the river. And there are uh, crewmen and slaves loading the, loading the, uh, uh, the bark of Van Curler here. Well, I, thanks to uh, Van Curler's bark, I sailed all the way down the river. And here we have the bark rounding uh, uh, what is now the battery. Manhattan. This is uh, Fort Amsterdam and uh, the windmill. Um, 
the bark is in the Hudson River. He's towing behind it a, a skiff loaded with um, different uh, supplies and goods from upriver. So thanks to Van Curler, I made my way down to the city. And once I got down there, for the first time in uh, my professional career, I really decided to make an effort to find out what did Manhattan look like in that time period. Uh, up until then, I'd spent a lot of time on the Albany area and the uh, um, uh, northern part of New York. You probably all recognize this. This is the Castello Plan. Um, the Castello Plan is a very good source of information to begin with, but there's lots of little problems with it. Um, for one thing, it depicts 1660, but it was probably drawn in around 1670. So there are, things, there are elements um, within the Castello plan that, that are a little bit out of time frame with the 1660s. And so one of the difficulties that I've had in working with the Castello plan is trying to strike a balance to figure out what the earlier city might have looked like. Um, one of the things that Courtney has been, uh, a project that Courtney has been really uh, behind and dri uh, driving force in is this virtual Manhattan project, which is the uh, digital model of Manhattan. And I have been working on that. Uh, this is the digital model that I have so far uh, based on the Castello plan. Um, I've, I've got most of the city represented there, but I've only been using these very simple representations of houses and buildings. And some of these <coughs> buildings um, are going to are going to go through uh, a number of changes. But there's the church inside uh, Fort Amsterdam. Um, this is Stuyvesant's house. This was later Leisler's house here. This is the Strand area. This is the Hudson River here in New York Bay out here. You can also catch a little bit of the canal in the background. Uh, and this is a painting, uh, most recent painting of Manhattan that I did based on a uh, composite of the Castello plan and some other uh, data. But there's Stuyvesant's house, uh, the windmill, the, 